Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is Sunday morning. I am heading to O'Hare International Airport. It's like right over there. To pick up my buddies, Jack Harju from Atlantis Water Gardens, Alan Decker, Decker's Pods, and Ralph Bezad from Pondscapes AZ. We are going to Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I cannot wait to show you what we're gonna build out there. Let's go get these guys from the airport. You ready? This one's gonna be fun. Build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Well, we got a little bit of rain, but uh, it just kind of seems to be par, right? <laughs> well, we made it. The sun is actually trying to come out, and it's been a rainy, rainy, rainy trip the entire way up here. We are here in downtown Kalamazoo, and if you look just over there, right there, we've got Ralph. We found him, got him at the airport. We got Jack, we got Alan, and we got James Whitaker. They're going over everything that we're talking about right now. We've got a pile of sand. You guys, I so badly want to take you inside this fence, show you all the rock, show you the design. But here instead, this is kind of a rough idea of what's going to be done. And really what I want to do is get James out here first thing tomorrow and talk about the children's nature playscape and how James and a collaborative effort have come up with this huge fun area all for children, the entire community to just use and enjoy the outdoors. But tomorrow, after I think some well-deserved rest and a little bit of food, we'll get into the whole design. I think this is gonna be a super special project, not just because of what it's for and what it's doing for the community, but also the collaborative effort between James Whitaker, Ralph Bezad, Jack Harju, Alan Decker, Team Aquascape, and all of us coming together for the first time ever to build something really, really, really cool. Hey guys, I'll see you tomorrow morning. You get some sleep and we'll get started tomorrow. Bye. All right guys, as promised, day one, everybody's getting their stuff together over here. Used to be getting tools and all that kind of stuff out. Now everybody's getting their uh, video equipment. We'll let them be for a sec while I take you guys on a quick little tour. So pretty awesome site designed by architects and then James from Only Outdoor Living over there. We'll get him in a second. But we've got about a 70 foot stream coming from up there, meandering down through here finishing in a 3,000 gallon pondless system over in here. There's gonna be a bridge roughly about there. If we look here, you can see the elevation change a little bit. So where Alan's standing, so really about where that stake is, right off this cone, is where the end of our reservoir is gonna be. The grade change from there to there is approximately two feet. We can set the top of our reservoir as deep as we want, which will ultimately give us more elevation here, which will then transfer back into these areas over in here so if we come up this way you can kind of see the paint marks laid out and then we're gonna do a wetland filter all the way up in here the key thing we have to do with this wetland filter is then take all of that soil back it up to this for stability purposes and then out of the wetland filter give a nice waterfall facing out towards the street I think we'll get James next and talk a little bit more about the design this is gonna be an awesome awesome experience love the idea of this park like I said several several times just kids interacting kids playing kids being naturally creative in an environment there's all kinds of other cool things but let's get James to talk about it so here's the man the guy responsible for most of this right and how's it going <laughs> this is James from only outdoor living yeah right James tell yeah. us a little bit about the property and uh, the site conditions where the lot came from etc cetera, etc cetera. sure sure so this project was brought to us through some people I work with we built some playgrounds around Southwest Michigan some natural playgrounds so the architect OCBA actually brought this to uh, to only outdoor living asked us if we'd be interested of course I said yes they had this these great ideas already in place for an awesome 
awesome water feature, natural elements in the playground, which we're all about. So they've had this space purchased for many years and the Children's Nature Playscape Committee has had big plans for this space for many years and been trying to get this thing moving. So we were really fortunate to be brought on board for this really awesome project. So I'll show you around the space a little bit here. This whole area, you know, is right downtown Kalamazoo. It yep. used to be church, right? So it got ran down or whatever. And through many attempts to renovate it or, or pay to have it rebuilt, failed because it was so expensive. So they ended up having to tear the church down. So they tore the church down and then they just made it into a grass field for now. The Children's Nature Playscape Committee purchased the property and then has been trying to develop it ever since. So they have this really awesome idea for the space that serves the local community, mostly you know children in the local community. There's 2,500 to 3,000 families within walking distance of this park that don't have any access, any immediate access wow. to nature. So their idea is to build a space, a playground that's ADA compliant and that allows children and people, all people, you know, anybody uh -huh. to access nature in a natural way, kind of like you and I, yeah. you know, when we were kids playing in the woods until dark. Yeah, talk, talk a little bit more about that because I think it's so important. We had a great conversation the other night just about children not, you know, like what was the number one rule when we were growing up? Yeah, the curfew, you the cur know, right. dark. Yeah, right. Be, be home, home by, by dark. Be home by dark. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's just, it was a normal thing. You know, if you're over 40, you know, that if you're playing, you're playing outside, you yep. know, you're building uh, wigwams out of sticks in the woods <laughs> or, or catching frogs or whatever yep. it is, getting dirty. You know, and kids in general these days, I don't think have that. So this is all unstructured play, right? Uh -huh. It balances risk with natural elements. This is called a double log mash. This is from a company called Nature's Instruments. This is just a conceptual drawing, right? Uh -huh. So so what this actually is, is Canadian white oak. They cut it out of the forest, the, the tops of the trees. They debark it. They make it safe for children. Then they engineer footings for those specific pieces. And then they connect it with this big nylon oh, mesh it net. so cool. So kids can climb all of these logs and yep. climb on the net. So that's central in this use area. That is in phase one. This project is in phases. So that's in phase one in this area here with this boulder climb, which is also in phase one. And then the very first thing we're going to do, obviously, is the water feature, right? And everything else on the property, as far as where it goes, what it, the amount of space we give it, yep. is dictated by the water feature. Well, how awesome is that? So we yeah. actually have a little bit of freedom to yeah. massage the space yeah. left, right, Absolutely. up, down. Yeah, within reason, yeah. you know? So, so they understand that, you know, this is a conceptual drawing of the water feature. It really, it essentially just illustrates where it's going. Yep. And, you know, we have some creativity, you know, some ability to change where that is, how high it is, the elevation changes, topography, all this is kind of up to us so it's, it's what we do and they trust us to do that so that's awesome we had this conversation almost a year ago right yeah uh, close, probably close right yeah close when I first got wind of it so talk a little bit about the team that you've put together to come out here well I wish I could say I put them together uh, <laughs> but you know I guess I'm not certain how we all met or came to be but OCBA the architects and RecWise and Only Outdoor Living kind of have just kind of found each other working together on other natural playgrounds Yep. Right. So we kind of had this great teamwork going on where OCBA being amazing, you know, national architects doing like crazy awesome projects. They're great at design and managing all the nuances of commercial and municipal development. And then Trisha at RecWise is a safety auditor for playgrounds. She does. She makes sure everything's compliant, right? Awesome. Because we, we want to build an awesome space, but we also need it to be safe. Yep. You know, and we need it to uh, we need it to pass inspections and, and just make sure your safety is number one. And then you know it's a liability right so we got to protect the church the best we can and then of course I like to build things with rocks yeah, and yeah. logs and you stuff have. yeah We've known each other for a long yeah, time yeah right? so it's kind of a perfect it's kind of a perfect union and the children's nature playscape committee reached out to OCBA because they're they're just a few blocks away from each other in downtown Kalamazoo nice. and OCBA has this been around forever and just you yep. know it's just a, an incredible shop so OCBA of course naturally called Trisha and me and we came together for a meeting and, and vice engineering of course vice works with OC, OCBA a lot in engineering so it just kind of made sense and we clicked really well with the CMP committee and they have a s amazing vision and as far as committees go absolutely the best one I've ever worked with like That's it's a well-oiled machine and and we just we hit it off right so it, it was it was great and they had appropriate amount of money they had great ideas and it was a, just a great just a great thing to do for the community so well and look at the like the plan I want to play in this park and it's not even yeah. built yet right it's awesome the stream is of course gonna be cool yeah but we are one part of the the giant wheel of all the cool stuff yeah. that's gonna be here James tell me a little bit about uh, your conversation with the church with the other collaborators over here and how 
you convinced them to get these other talented pond builders out here? Well, you know, I didn't have to convince them much. I didn't even tell them about you until a few <laughs> weeks, ago, you know, a couple months ago. Because, you know, obviously it, it took a lot of coordinating yep. to get you out here and a lot went into the, the front end of things. But um, I didn't want to set a major, ex I have major expectations yeah, yeah, for yeah. the project, right? Yeah. But I didn't want to set that for them. I want what we do to kind of be a surprise for them. Blow, blow them away. I want to blow them yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want them to know that they put their money in the right hands, they put their trust in the right people. And I know that by calling the best CACs in the country, you know, the best people in the country, the world, some people yeah. would say the world, that that's Jack, gonna happen. Jack would definitely say Jack the world. Jack would say he's, yeah, the best, best in, in the, the world. Best in the world. <laughs> in, the, in the galaxy, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I did, you know, I introduced them, I, I sent some videos along, so they do kind of know what they're getting into, I hope by now, but my hope is to, by not setting some crazy expectation to totally blow my life. Awesome. That's my hope. Well, let's go get those guys. James, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity yeah, yeah. to do this. Be part of what's gonna be a central part of downtown Kalamazoo, Michigan sure. for a very, very, very long, long time. time. Awesome, Absolutely. man. Cool, cool. Thanks. All right, so we have a 3,000 gallon reservoir. We've got roughly a 13 by 13 foot hole laid out here. Take all this soil, we'll put it over here. I'm gonna get Alan at some point in skid steer, so shuffling it back behind Absolutely. the berm. And I think Ralph and I are gonna start building some aqua blocks. When you get bored, you come help us. <laughs> <laughs> that thing only goes one speed. <laughs> so people always ask what are the best working conditions we could possibly think of. And sand is so nice until it's not. And this is what I mean by that. So what happens, you know, this area of Michigan is just all sand. And you're sure inspired to contour the ground exactly the way you want, carve in every single boulder to exact perfection because it's so effortless to move the soil to get that to happen but the bad thing is is because the sand is so loose when you're digging these larger holes it's so easy to get these cave-ins that happen so you can see how jack over here has just kind of like ramped out the sand on that side using the side of his bucket deep and try to compact that a little bit he's starting to do that on this side but as he gets deeper especially close to where he's at with the machine it gets a little hairy because that whole side could want to cave in so pretty soon he's gonna have to back up and then we'll have to gently try to get these aqua blocks in here without caving all the sides in. There we go. There is our excavated hole for a 3,000 gallon reservoir. We've got that little indentation is where two vaults are gonna go. So we've got aqua blocks around the back side. So many this way, so many this way. We're actually doing nine by five aqua blocks. So you can see this is kind of the footprint. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have nine going this way. That'll give us 45 times two. So Jack's just down there fine tuning the hole, making sure things are nice and level. So when we go put the fabric back in and the liner, then all of these things sit nice and flat. And the tricky part about the sand is you can see every little footprint knocks things off from being level. So as long as we get it close, we're pretty good. Jack tends to like to blue the hell out of it. And <laughs> pretty soon he's gonna ask for a 12 foot level down there. <laughs> And then you can see the excavated side. So the other thing we've done is really over excavated the hole so we could almost walk all the way around the perimeter of this thing, which you'll see pretty soon here. The reason we did that is because sides continue to cave in. If we try to drop these blocks and even trying to put the blocks in off of this edge is not safe because this whole bank wants to cave in. You can see Jack's recessed areas back in here, trying to eliminate that. And then Ralph's got the bucket ready for him to come in and get out of there. thousand gallon reservoir we got just over 90 blocks in there we got two vaults we got all the liner bolted back over the top so we could backfill the sand back in there now we're gonna fold actually we'll probably leave this like this and start marking out our shape and how we actually want to see that waterfall come into here interact with everything kind of locate out the bridge you can see Alan leveling everything off the other thing we try to do we don't want that sand too much higher than the top of the aqua box so then you'll get a little weird fold in there in fact you almost want to lower if you can We'll get all that done, we'll start marking this out, and then start setting some boulders, yeah! Alright, 
right, so we took that big 30 by 50, folded it back up over the waterfall, backfilled to everything, cut out our next area. Now we're gonna pull that back. We're gonna see how far we can get. Inevitably, we're doing a seam at some point or another. So we'll get that fabric rolled back. You guys will get an idea kind of what that waterfall looks like. Zone's coming across, awesome waterfall yeah. coming down into that little cove, depression, frame rocks, support rocks. We gotta get some more back in through here. And we cut that back, and the bridge is just past James, like right about in there. So that's a wrap for today. We have to get some seam tape, we have to get some boards, we have to do all that first thing tomorrow morning. I think we actually did pretty good. We got the 3,000 gallon reservoir put in, we've got waterfalls framed out, we got that whole reservoir backfilled and everything else, we got some support stuff, we got some stairs. Tomorrow we'll be back here, or in your case, next episode, you want to see how we seam that liner and build another waterfall? You come check us out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and we'll keep showing you more and more of this awesome project. Bye.